welcome to the first Sunday in May after a refreshing rainfall this week, uh, which got rid of some of the pollen uh, for some of us who battle allergies and that also may have washed uh, out and caused us to sneeze a little more, which happened to me. We do celebrate the flowers in bloom, some of which grace our table, and the fragrant spirit of God, which envelops this time of worship. We offer a special greeting to those of you who are worshiping online. You may want to have food and drink available for communion later on. Prayer requests can be sent by Facebook live chats, and our videographer will pass those on during our prayer time. Those in person, please use the prayer slips found on the back of your chairs and pass them on to Celeste, and they'll be shared later on. A few announcements being the first Sunday of the month, we are taking communion by you coming forward and taking a piece of bread and the cup and eating and drinking and then returning to your seats by the outer aisles. Uh, this is uh, something we're trying to do on the first Sunday of the month as a different way to receive the Lord's Supper. If you remain seated, the elder will come to you. So if you don't feel comfortable getting up and walking to get communion, just stay seated and the elder will come to you. The elders are meeting at 1040 today next door. There is a finance meeting at win on Wednesday at 1.30 here in this place. Bible study is Thursday at noon. Uh, they are starting a new study, right? The study of Daniel, right? Yeah, we had an excellent discussion last week. It's very interesting. Okay, that, that's a plug. So come join them Thursdays at noon. Really good study. Next Sunday is Mother's Day. We invite you to come and celebrate moms and honor the maternal gifts reflected in our God on this special Sunday. Reverend Steve Kendall will be preaching in my absence as I self-quarantine prior to shoulder surgery, which happens the following week. Please mark your calendars for Sunday, May 21st at 2 p.m. for the Blessing of the Good Water Crossing Microshelter Project at the back of St. James Lutheran Church. To date, our church folks have given over $10,000 to this project, and it is very important that we be present as it gets kicked off uh, in our community. Hope Van had a good day on Friday with 20 very hungry people being fed and leftovers were sent home with them. Please consider what you can do to support this important ministry for the June 2nd food distribution. Also in May, we are collecting peanut butter and beef jerky, uh, which have been suggested to help feed the unsheltered in our community. You can leave those donations in the box under the name board at the back. I believe Pauline has an announcement. I didn't get it in the grapevine. Is that on? It's on. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I guess after Good Water Crossing, uh, you can come here on the 21st and enjoy our community choir uh, concert. Uh, the church has so graciously uh, allowed us to have our rehearsals here and we enjoy it and we hope you will enjoy the music. Uh, we'll also have finger food afterwards. Uh, two, three o'clock, we will be here at two. Okay. So thank you. Yes. <coughs> So you can go to the Good Water uh, Blessing, make a day of it, and then come over here at 3 o'clock for great music and treats afterwards. The Blessing will not be that long, so you will have time to go ahead and come over to the choir concert after. Are uh, there other, yes, Lynn? On that board, did I see there was going to be another potluck May 28th? May 28th, okay. yes, yes. Cool. There is another potluck on May 28th, which is Pentecost Sunday. It, we celebrate the birthday of the church. It will be a celebration of music, and our musicians will be leading that service and giving us a taste of how church music built the church. You're invited to wear red, and there will be a sign-up sheet starting next week to what you can bring. Is it going to be 11 like it was? At 11, okay. yes. All right. Yes. Thank you for catching me. Marky, do you have yes, notes? I do. It's amazing to me how far the end of the time when we need to fill those slots at the thrift store that people come through. Um, 
Whether you're here or at home, if you can fill any of these slots, let me know. On Tuesday, we need one or two people to help between 11.50 and 4.40, so you can split that and just do half of it. And then on Friday, at this point, we have no coverage. So if you can serve as a cashier or as a backup helper, please give me a call. Um, my number is 530-556-0451. Have a director, you have it. But if you're sitting at home watching us on FaceTime, now you have it too. Margie, I'll do the cashier on the 12th. On Friday. the 12th, Friday, all day? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, you Ben. <laughs> she just did it last week, so I'm ah. really grateful. <laughs> yeah. So, anybody want to come have a party with Lynn? Uh, <laughs> yes. And we do party. You do yeah, party, yeah. I know. Yeah. Stand or follow me. I know, it's, it's a good, good time. Party. Yes, lots of fun at the first store. So, do uh, uh, set aside Friday and come join us. Are there other announcements <laughs> for our family? If not, you want to say something before you have a, I'll, I'll just say it before I pray real quick. So, um, <clears throat> I'm playing the uh, songs today. I can't do the reading one. Um, I'm playing uh, songs from the Chalice Praise today. And if you like them and want to sing them, I'm just going to give you the numbers, right? And it's 100, 66, 94, 97. So I'm doing 100 for the prelude, 66 for the, what's that, operatory, and then 94, 97 for and I just went through the book and I thought, you know, there's some good songs in there. And so we'll share this is the purple small paperback. You may recognize the prayer. Okay. But you can read the words because you don't want me to sing them. <laughs> <laughs> Far better you than me. <laughs> let us take a deep breath and let the Spirit greet us in this time and place. And that's a hundred. <laughs>
Thank you, Sonia. Good morning, everybody. Please rise for the call to worship. When we are called to sing God's praises with hearts so filled with pain that we would rather weep, God understands our burdens. God has walked the shadow way and knows our despair. When we are called to sing God's praises by the stumble over fear and loneliness, God embraces us in loving arms. God gives us faith and hope enough to break forth in songs of gratitude and prayers of surrender. We praise our loving God who has placed us in families as small as one person and as large as all creation. Our lives are in God's hands as we seek the way, the truth, and the life in Jesus' path. The first song is His Eye is on the Sparrow, which is in your hymnal, page 82, and also on the screen.
who has custody of the cats and is helping take care of arrangements. There will be a service of internment uh, held at a later date. Uh, he will be buried with his parents. Uh, they had a shared family plot. Be praying for Deanna B, who is going to see a neurosurgeon for a significant mass in her school, which is believed to be benign but must be removed, and explains the pain and various uh, afflictions that she's been battling for several weeks now. So keep her in, and the neurosurgeon, and we pray that can get in quickly. Uh, Jim B was released from the hospital after a serious uh, kidney infection, a, a kidney stone blockage, and doing much better. We are thrilled to have him back today. He's trying to get his strength back. Uh, we are grateful he's here, and he wants to thank you for all your prayers and friendship. It means the world to him. I'd like to thank um, God for the entire staff uh, at the re at SMRC. Amazing staff at the uh, hospital there. They are truly saints, yes, yes. And uh, I don't think uh, any of us knew how serious Jim was until he got to the hospital. And they acted right away, thank God they did. And uh, so we celebrate his presence and uh, so grateful that God answered our prayers. Prayers are asked for Julie H., uh, our office manager's son, Ben, his wife and their baby were in a serious car accident on Monday in Hanford, just south of Fresno. They were hit by a drunk driver running a red light. Um, ben took the worst of it by swerving the vehicle to protect his family, had swelling on the spinal cord. Uh, Julie received the phone call by a police officer on Monday. Uh, she was already in Sacramento, and she simply turned her car around and started heading south. Uh, ben was released from the hospital yesterday. He, the swelling uh, came down on his spinal cord. He is walking very slowly. He has broken ribs and a broken clavicle bone. Um, Julie will stay with them until Monday and hopes to be back in the office on Tuesday. Uh, the baby was fine. Uh, the, the wife, Ben's wife Darlene, suffered a broken, uh, a, a, or not a broken leg, just an injury to her leg, and she was knocked unconscious, so they watched for concussion, but she is doing okay. But uh, prayers for the whole family during this very difficult time, and we're just grateful that they are in recovery. Uh, Jean W. called this morning. Her grandson, Seth W., is still battling poison oak near his eyes and his face. His eye is swelled shut. It's been three weeks now. He's missed quite a bit of school, and anybody who has ever had poison oak, just imagine it near your eye. It's not a place to have it. So please, prayers for little Seth and the whole family as they support him. Uh, we, Gail A. and Jack H.'s sister, Missy, is going to an oncologist in Idaho. Is that right? <laughs> uh, prayers uh, for the whole family and that. Kim J.'s father has serious meningitis. The family is gathering around him in support. Mm -hmm. Marcy F.'s gardener, Andreas, Andreas, his mother-in-law had a stroke and is in a local hospital on a feeding tube. We pray for those who were affected by the mass shooting at a Chico party yesterday uh, in our own semi-backyard. One young person dead, others injured. Another mass shooting in the Dallas Mall, nine dead, several injured. We're at 199 out of 127 days this year. So <coughs> prayers for a change, uh, a movement to go in a different direction. Uh, it, uh, it is heartbreaking to see these happening more than once a day. Yeah. I also, also ask for prayers for my daughter, Michaela who is in finals this week and is struggling to get a summer law internship in a highly competitive field of civil rights law. And uh, she is just pulling her hair out and very stressed. Uh, she, will be join she will be flying in Saturday to be with me during my surgery, so I am grateful for that. Uh, are there other concerns or celebrations for the church? Yes. So, your surgery? Uh, May 16th, a week from Tuesday. Yes. Good morning, Pastor. Hey, Doug, how are you? So glad to see you. Yes. Um, a prayer for my children, mother, Sandy, who uh, the night before last, but, uh, took over the dog bed at my grandfather's night and broke her arm. Oh, no. Badly, and uh, she was okay. And so she's actually going in to get surgery this morning. Oh, goodness. And uh, had like complete reconstruction of her. And what's her name? Her name is Sandy. 
Sandy. So prayers for Sandy, this mother, a friend of Doug's, that tripped over a dog bed. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness. Many broken bones, so going to, into surgery, went to pray for that surgery to go well and for her to get better quickly. Other prayer, can, yes, Helen. I have a friend, Sherry, that was gardening and tripped and fell. She broke her hip, oh, her oh, leg, dear. and her arm. Oh, oh friend of Helen's, uh, Helen asks who, uh, Sherry, who tripped gardening. Between dog beds and gardening, who knew that there were dangers all around us? Broke <laughs> a leg, um, her hip, her hip and, and, her and her arm. Holy cow. <laughs> I was going to say, watch out for the dog beds, but I kind of you watch out when you're gardening. I don't know. <laughs> Other concerns or celebrations? That, this yes. isn't a celebration, but this is just a blessing. I just want to bless the Lord that for just giving us shelter, heat, cool, gas, I mean food. We're so fortunate to have all that stuff. We are. are. So many that do not have. We are. Yes. And in fact, I um, want to say a, a prayer for a gentleman who uh, is, is working, has a, has a job, uh, was living in a car on our property without my knowledge um, uh, because he can't afford rent. And um, so, uh, it, a very nice young man. And it just reminds me how lucky we are to have what we have and how heartbreaking it is for solid people who are just cannot afford the monthly rent that is being charged in our community. Yeah. Are there other concerns or celebrations for our church family? If not, I invite you to breathe deeply of God's love and mercy as God attentively pays attention to our prayers and as we seek to share with God what weighs on our hearts. Loving God, in whom we live and move and have our being, we thank you for the relationship that you make possible through Christ. In Jesus, you drew near to us that we might draw near to you. You promise your guidance and your wisdom in our lives when we seek it. We pray that you will give us the patience to wait for it to recognize it when it comes, and to follow it once it is given. We pray for the many people that have been named in this time, knowing that you are the great physician and can provide all that is needed for each life to find healing and hope. We lament this day, O oh God, for the troubles of this world, of which there are so many, we grieve the troubles of our lives, which so often overshadow others. Help us to see how you meet us in our most vulnerable moments. Your comfort lifts us up when we are depressed, and your power humbles us when we are proud. Your courage strengthens us when we are afraid, and your peace calms us when we are in battle. Give us the resolve, O oh God, to advocate for peace in our world. For end to mass shootings, which we have too easily dismissed as inevitable. <clears throat> for shelter for those who are unsheltered and food for those who are hungry. O oh God, forgive us for our tendencies to give up, to shake our heads and do no more to protect our children and youth. Have mercy on us when we bury the gospel message because we have lost the courage to stand up against the powers of greed, wealth, and selfish pride. Remind us that you offer the way to hope and healing. In your name is our life, our hope, and our peace. Move us, O oh saving God to be instruments of life, hope, and peace in this time. In your most holy name we pray. Amen.
chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. <coughs> believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, 
and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Thank you, Margie. Margie was that lucky elder that got stuck with a really long scripture. <laughs> There's always this grimace from the elders when they see what the scripture is. Oh, how many verses is that one? <laughs> So friends, I am in uh, knee deep with my insurance regarding what is covered and not covered with my impending shoulder surgery. I uh, do believe that one almost needs an insurance or medical license just to understand the jargon. Thank you God for Google. When I get a bit overwhelmed by all of it, it is good to release some of my anxiety with a chuckle which I got when reading about the man who woke up in a hospital in traction with his insurance agent looming over him. The agent said, the good news is that your accident policy covers falling off the roof. The bad news is that it doesn't cover hitting the ground. <laughs> then there's the story radio personality Paul Harvey once told about a woman named Patricia. Some of you might know that name, Paul Harvey. <laughs> Patricia was being interviewed in a food line waiting for much needed essentials after Hurricane Andrew devastated South Florida. After uh, speaking with her insurance agent, she vowed she was going to get out of the state as soon as possible. She was determined to get away from the horrors of hurricanes as possible, as soon as possible, and as far away as possible, and take a much needed restful vacation. Not too long afterwards, Paul heard from Patricia again. She was standing in line for fresh water on the Hawaiian island of Kauai, having just got hit with Hurricane Aniki. And of course, some of us remember the story of the car fire survivors who moved to paradise shortly after, only to lose their home in a campfire five months later. There is trouble everywhere that goes way beyond insurance claims. Russia claims the United States is near to an all-out open armed conflict with them. Violence and prejudice against LGBT. BTQ plus individuals is escalating at alarming rates. Military suicides continue to rise. Mass shootings in nearby communities happen and I had to send away a very nice young man yesterday who was living out of his car because he couldn't afford rent. And our insurance would drop us like a hot potato if they found out we let him stay. And the list goes on. My heart is troubled, but I am not disheartened. When I dwell on the state of things, I am sad and outraged. I am anxious and appalled. To borrow a phrase from the novelist Anne Lamott, I think such awful thoughts that I cannot even say them out loud because they would make Jesus want to drink gin straight out of a cat dish. <laughs> In other words, my heart is troubled. Our text today is a familiar one. If, if for no other reason, then you have probably heard it at several funerals. The reference to preparing a place before us, a mansion with many rooms, gives a sense of assurance and comfort for those of us who are grieving a deceased loved one. The original text for the word mansion is best understood as a night stop, a, a resting place. And the word many in that text implies there's room for all. It's not a word that the Hebrews understood as a number word. It was a inclusive for all, room for all. James Howell notes this text is not about some fabulous house in heaven that we're going to go to after we die, but rather simply means to remain Stay or abide with God. It won't be like Tammy Faye Baker's famous shopping mall in the sky where she has no credit limit on her 
car, credit card, but it will be a state of being and abiding with God where there is room for all. Jesus is speaking to his friends on what is traditionally called the farewell discourse. And these words are meant to encourage and guide the small band of followers gathered in the upper room who will so easily get lost and troubled by the world around them. They will have to struggle against the pagan gods of Rome and worship of idols. They will exhaust themselves just trying to pay their bills. They will be in trouble with the government over human rights and equity for all. They will stand in direct contrast to the values of their neighbors near and far. Does this sound familiar to you? So Jesus gathers them all together in a somber meal the night before his death as the disciples are trembling with anxiety. Jesus reassures them that there is a way, there is a path by which they can cope, by which they can manage the troubles of their lives. This term, the way, comes out of the wisdom literature, particularly the book of Proverbs, before Jesus' followers ever became known as Christians late in the first century, they were first known as followers of the way. In that time, the word way designated an action of treading along and calls to mind this path, which is worn by constant use. The implication was that wisdom involved patterns of behavior that you would enact in your life, not just isolated acts but patterns over and over again and the purpose of the way was to form a new mindset by which a follower of Jesus continues to ask am I on the right track in my life how can I know and serve God in my life and the answer Jesus gives is both simple and profound he says I am the way we grow into that answer as we live out over the months and the years of our lives, just wading into it slowly and then all out swimming in it. Every time we return to those basic questions of life, it can be with a deepened faith since the last time we asked them. Sometimes maybe we need Jesus to chide us, to tell us we are not making the progress that we could have in our faith. He chides us and the disciples then and now about what we already know to be true, but continually allow to slip away. When we come face to face with sorrow and adversity, Jesus is kind of like saying to us, come on now, friends, you know this. I've taught you this. We've been through this before, you and I. Hold on to that promise. It won't let you down now. I am the way. In me, you see God. In me, you have met and will meet God. My teachings will guide your steps. My presence will sustain your spirit. In all the twists and turns your future path may take, I am the way. Notice here that there is nothing about exclusion. There is nothing about taking this scripture and dividing up who is saved and who isn't. There's a lot of mistruth that gets sprouted around regarding verse 6, no one comes to the Father except through me. This is a part of the text that I find most troubling, and truthfully, I usually leave it out when I read it in a funeral service because too many people have taken it out of context and used it as a whip weapon to boldly ber berate people. Jesus is not making a claim as to who is saved and who isn't, but is rather laying down distinctiveness about the way which makes it different from others. It is a way to describe. It is not a way to exclude. As Alex um, McKenzie states, there are times and seasons when it is important to declare where you stand in comparison to other religions that also offer explanations of the mysteries and the order of life. To declare we all basically believe the same thing would come as very startling news. Even apparently arrogant 
to our Hindu or Jewish friends, our Buddhist or Muslim friends. We understand the divine maybe in different ways, and it discredits the sincere beliefs of other faiths when we dismiss those distinctions so easily. So Jesus is saying, rather than dismiss our distinctiveness, we find a way to honor differences without diminishing faith. That is the goal of the Shasta Inner Faith Group that was founded over 20 years ago and still meets in our church once a month. Most importantly, we remember that there was a permissiveness to Jesus that surprised his disciples and amazed his enemies. This way that he taught was one of drawing a circle so broad and inclusive that even some who wished to not be included, who wished to stand outside the circle, found themselves enveloped in it unexpectedly. Such is the case in a legendary story about Judas after he has betrayed Jesus. Judas finds himself at the bottom of a deep abyss. He lays there for a couple centuries and slowly begins to stir and sit up. Looking up, he sees a faint light at the surface, miles above, and he begins to climb. Sometimes he slips and he falls back and spends a century or two regaining lost ground. Sometimes he rests, but he keeps climbing. As he climbs, the light seems to grow stronger, to grow more brightly. It seems to energize and call to him. He keeps climbing. His limbs gaining strength the closer he comes to the light. After a couple millennia, he reaches the top. His hands and body scraped and fatigued from the climb. He struggles to find a place to rest his hands to hold up the weight of his body as he hauls himself up through the opening of the top of the abyss. When he does, his muscles shaking from the effort he finds himself in an upper room where a young rabbi is having supper with his friends. The young rabbi turns and greets Judas. His face is glowing with pleasure. Judas, welcome home. We have been waiting for you, he says. We could not continue the supper without you. We could not continue the supper without you. You see, friends, Jesus is the way for those who dwell in an abyss of misery and futility, for those overwhelmed with troubled and anxious hearts. Jesus is the way for those who are just going through the motions every day. Jesus is the way for new disciples who fear their questions are just too basic. How can we know the way to God? Am I on the right track in life? How can we see and serve God? Jesus says to us, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I tell you, the one who believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater works than those. Friends, at the, this very moment, my heart is troubled. Maybe yours is too, but I am not disheartened because there is a way for all of us, a way of being in this world where everyone is treated with the dignity they deserve as beloved children of God, a world where no one is expendable or replaceable, a world where all are included in God's blessed circle. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Amen. Dear friends, it is at this table where troubled hearts are welcomed and find the way not to be disheartened, but to walk the path that gives us hope. I invite you to prepare to take at this table, reminding you that we will come forward at the direction of the servers 
As we sing together, number 14, Womb of Life and Source of Being, verses 1 through 3, stand if you're able to sing together. Thank <laughs> you. 
May this meat be food and drink, may this meal be food and drink for our journey. Renewing, sustaining, and making us whole. Amen. The table is ready. All are welcome. Come for the feast is spread. And if you haven't yet, take a moment to sanitize your hands. <laughs> know something about Redding. Redding is uh, given the title the sunniest city in California. I mean, I have a mural that says that too. I have no idea. I did so, uh, Sunniest city. I like to think that that has as much to do with the weather as it has to do with our disposition. So that maybe when our hearts are troubled, we find that path that leads us to God's light, to God's shining, brilliant 
love that maybe we share with others when storm clouds descend. If you have come to the time where you want to accept God's light in your life and you want to follow Jesus as the path leader, as Margie talked about, we ask that you come forward as we sing our hymn of commitment, number 432, O oh Christ the Way, the Truth, and the Life. Stand if you're able to sing together.